In this video, I'm going to be covering how to do Cerakote at home. I'll be uh, Cerakoting uh, this particular knife. This is done in Magpul Flat Dark Earth, or Magpul FTE as it's called. Um, it's going to be a two-part series, so it turned out to be a pretty long uh, video, and I didn't want to kill everybody with 30 minutes of uh, the same thing. So, cutting it up into two segments. Uh, this first segment is going to be on cleaning and prepping, what you're going to be Cerakoting. Um, the second segment is going to be mixing up the paints, uh, painting, and cleanup. So stay tuned, keep watching, and um, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. You can hit that button right down there. All right, so the first thing we want to do is, uh, of course, disassemble the uh, knife in this case, or whatever it is, your Cerakoting, and um, give it a soak in, uh, in acetone. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to degrease it, but these items that you're Cerakoting have to be absolutely grease free. So what I'm going to do is put just enough acetone in this container to cover the blade and the uh, tang. Um, one of the areas we're going to be doing is the back as well and the blade. Now the um, blade's fairly easy. So I've got a couple of things that make this easier to do. Um, one of them is this hook. There's a hole in the tang. As far as the back, what I do is I have a bolt. That's the right thread pattern. And I've got a piece of wire attached to it. And we'll put that in the acetone, like so. Now I have a few more parts that are going to be Cerakoted the same color, which is a uh, Flat Dark Earth, as it's called. So I'm putting these in the acetone. All right, now we're gonna let these soak uh, for at least an hour. And um, I, uh, I at times let them soak overnight, to be honest with you. I'm gonna cover this up so we get as little evaporation as possible of the acetone. I'm gonna recover this acetone, I'll put it in a container and I'll use it to clean everything up afterwards. So once you do the Cerakote, uh, you wanna clean your tools up. I'll be using an airbrush and most of this uh, acetone will be going towards cleaning up the airbrush afterwards. All right, these have been soaking in acetone overnight. Uh, I'm going to take them out and um, put them in a colander, and I'll explain why in a minute. So that completes phase one and two. Phase one being disassembly of the object that you're going to Cerakote. Phase two being degreasing, and I chose the acetone method to degrease. Um, from now on, I'll be wearing some gloves just to keep any oils from my hands from contaminating the pieces. I've also got this colander, and I'll be putting these parts in this colander, and I'll explain why. The, uh, there's gonna be some really small parts that I'm going to be working with. And if any of you have ever um, done anything with a glass cabinet, um, when a small part falls through the grate and disappears into 25 pounds of media, it's a bit of fun to try to get that back out again. So I'm putting all these parts in the colander. We're going to go to the blast cabinet. That's going to be phase three, which is blasting uh, the components with media. I've got 100 grit aluminum oxide in there, uh, which is the recommended blast media. Um, I've actually done it with 120. I actually like 120 better, but I bought 50 pounds of 100 grit, and that's uh, what they recommend, either 100 or 120 grit aluminum oxide. So let's get this over to the blast cabinet and um, go with the next step, which is the uh, surface prep. So I do have a full-size blast cabinet. It's a long story. Um, I ended up getting one at a really good deal. I couldn't pass up. So I went ahead and do, uh, did that. Um, I've got the components. I'm going to put them in the blast cabinet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the blasting. And it's going to get quite noisy because I'm going to turn on the compressor. Um, it'll be running in the background, turn on the vacuum. Um, now, if you don't have a blast cabinet, um, hopefully you know somebody that does, but there is an alternative uh, that's not uh, as expensive as a full size, but if you're doing small parts, um, look at the link down below and uh, you'll see I have a link to a small uh, blast cabinet that you could use in your home Cerakoting.
All right, so I'm through with blasting. A um, couple of points about the blast cabinet. Uh, one, I set the, uh, I've got a little pressure gauge here, but I set it at 50 PSI. When I'm blasting, it goes down to 30. Um, that works for me for aluminum and metal parts. Might want to go even lower if you're doing any plastic parts. But I uh, just wanted to put that out there. I also wanted to say that your media should be um, meticulously clean. No grease oils on your media. Uh, you'll find people that own blast cabinets if you have to borrow one. are probably going to be a little picky about that. So make sure you're properly degreased. But anyway, that's phase three. So what I'm going to do now, take that colander full of parts out. And this is why a colander is nice. I'm just going to shake a little media out of there. Now what you want to do is blow it. I've got a nozzle that's set for about 20 PSI here and I'll blow all the dust off. And um, it should be dust free at this point. Let's close this cabinet up. Because what we're going to do next is phase four, which is racking and masking. I don't have any masking that I need to do for these, but if you are going to mask off any areas you don't want Cerakoted, now's when you would do that. I've got a little spray cabinet I made out of a old TV entertainment center. I might do a video about that someday. Um, now I already racked some of these before. If you saw when I, before I put it into the um, acetone, I had them racked, but I'm going to go through it, rack it again, and then go on to the next phase. So I'm going to go ahead and get these racked. Typically use wire, either a very flexible wire for a string of parts or a very stiff wire for single parts. But let me go ahead and show you how, uh, how I do that. So the bigger parts are going to, some of these are already racked, for instance, uh, this guy is already racked. I'm going to hang them up here. I've got a rod in this cabinet uh, set up specifically for uh, Cerakote. And the reason I say that is uh, parts that have been Cerakoted or ready to be Cerakoted, I can hang on there. Now one of the things I wanted to point out, when I take these out, I'll inspect it and um, what I'm looking for is any irregularities, uh, uneven spots. Uh, sometimes as you're blasting, you get little stains that come out, especially in stainless. Interesting, huh? But uh, I'm looking for that. And if should they have any, I would put them back in the blast cabinet and blast them a little more. So here, here's basically a string of parts. Um, some of these they don't have a hole to thread through so you want to wrap it around there as best you can it's going to interfere a little bit but these are properly racked if you will uh, for Cerakote but we're not going to Cerakote just yet there's one step we have to take before we go forward with that all right so phase four is complete everything is racked um, the uh, next step is called gassing out and let me explain what that is so phase five is gassing out or gas out. It's where you're going to bake the components. Um, we're assuming metal components. If they're uh, polymer, plastic, or wood, um, you're not going to have to gas them out. But we're going to bake the components at 300 degrees for 60 minutes. And what this is designed to do is that if there's any greases or oils that are still embedded in there, they're going to flush out. And uh, then we would go through the, some of these processes of degreasing again. Now I've got a oven set up. It's actually an old smoker. Um, I've got a pit controller. It's set for 300 degrees. It's a 299.4. I actually converted this old smoker into a uh, into an oven specifically for Cerakote. You can use a small toaster oven um, or even a kitchen oven. Um, I wouldn't advise you let your wife know you're doing it, but or your husband. I decided in the past since I was going to do volume, I paid 25 bucks for this and um, for this smoker. Uh, it wasn't working. The heat, heating element was, so I made this pit controller, which is pretty neat. There's a video on that. Uh, if you're interested in doing one, you can uh, just uh, go to this video up here. And um, set it up. It's pretty good. And this pit controller holds it pretty accurately, too. Notice I still have gloves. We want to avoid getting any grease on these, so I'm going to hang these in here. And of course, the heat's uh, coming out, but that's to be expected. We lost some heat, but it's uh, not too bad. It's at 220. It'll take about 10 minutes. It'll be up to 300 degrees again. 
So I'm going to leave it in there for an hour and 10 minutes and go through another set of gloves because um, quite frankly, at this point, you don't want to get any grease on, on uh, any of the components that you're Cerakoting or the Cerakote's not going to stick correctly. All right, it's been a little bit over an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these out of the oven and put them in the uh, spray cabinet, let them cool down a little bit before we start Cerakoting. Now, I will be using these gloves. Um, they're actually grease-free. What I do is every time I use these when I'm Cerakoting, I'll wash them in Dawn and hot water, and I'll let them dry. I'll let them air dry to ensure that there's not any uh, contaminants on them. But let me go ahead and uh, get these out of here. Yeah, so these gloves have... Uh, aligning to uh, protect you from the heat now what we want to do after gas and now it is inspect these um, if we were to see any stains on this that would mean that oil uh, came out during the gas out process uh, what we want to see is that they're clean uh, if they're not we'd have to repeat the uh, degreasing process with acetone that was phase five, the gassing out. Phase six is going to be getting the paint ready. Phase seven will be painting. So we've got the knives and the other parts uh, cleaned, prepped, blasted, and ready to go. So in the next segment, um, you can actually look at the next segment right here by clicking on this link. I'll do the uh, paint mixing, the spraying, the baking, and come up with the final product. So if you enjoyed this, hit share, like, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.